to supplement with this. So with regards to the human-to-human -human transmission question, so um, right from the start, uh, from the first notification uh, that we received on the 31st of December, um, given that this was a, a cluster of pneumonia, um, I'm a, the, a MERS specialist, so my background is in coronaviruses and in influenza, so immediately thought, uh, given that it's a respiratory pathogen, that, of course, uh, there may be human-to-human -human transmission. So uh, initially, when we started to put together our technical guidance for um, our member states, um, we t put uh, guidance that um, focused on how this virus could be transmitted. Um, and what we focused on was droplet and contact transmission, which is how respiratory pathogens are spread. We also, within our infection prevention and control guidance, put out um, a special provision for healthcare workers who are focused on conducting um, aerosol generating procedures in which we put in place recommendations for airborne transmission. That guidance is still in effect. Um, the guidance that we put up was on the 10th of January. Um, it was the 10th and the 11th of January because there were five or six uh, technical guidance materials that were actually put up on the web, which were open to everyone. We also shared this guidance package, which included surveillance guidance on how to find cases, uh, laboratory guidance on how to detect cases, um, infection prevention and control, how to prevent infections, particularly in healthcare settings, because given our past experience with MERS and with SARS, um, we immediately thought that you could have transmission in healthcare facilities, you could have amplification events in healthcare facilities, and potential super spreading events. Um, I did a press briefing on January 14th. Um, where I mentioned this, um, and in fact, that got quite a few headlines because I think um, saying that we may have super spreading events is something that we worry about as an, as an organization, and we want to do everything that we can to prevent that from happening. Um, we also put out a readiness checklist at the time for countries to say, how are we prepared to deal with a pathogen, a respiratory pathogen, and what systems do we need to put in place? And we lastly put out a disease commodity package, which listed all of the materials that one may need to detect cases, um, to care for cases, um, given that we didn't have a, a, a treatment, we still don't yet, but to put out how can we, how can we symptomatically treat individuals. Um, and so very early on, uh, suspected that there would be human-to-human -human transmission because it's a respiratory pathogen. Um, and so that's why our guidance on the 10th and the 11th of January uh, included information on how to protect uh, people from getting infected, focusing on respiratory and droplet transmission. And uh, we just may add, in terms of uh, official information to our member states on January the